We were involved in this research before the earthquake. After the earthquake, we tried to to get from real problems some consideration. Try to do some also, let's say, uh, theoretical work, and uh, also looking at uh, real application. Um, these are. Uh, some of the recent uh, publication. Uh, I put uh, or read the publication that uh, I, I, I will uh, speak about uh, to, to, to today. So we have uh, uh, some publication on, uh, on output only model identification. Uh, another publication is uh, on damping performance of two oscillators coupled by a viscoelastic connection that I, speak, I will speak about. Uh, and I will try to show to you how this work is related with a, a real uh, application. And uh, also there are some other publications that uh, are related to the case study of uh, Basilica of Collemaggio. Uh, we have a, a, a new lab, uh, it's a lab of uh, computational mechanics that is in the new department and uh, at the University of L'Aguila we, we are in, in one week we are going back to the old building where we will have uh, a lot of space and so this lab will have some space there too. Uh, so, I, I am uh, preparing the presentation uh, in some sense uh, uh, following what we have done immediately after the earthquake. So, my research group was involved in, in something, so immediately after the earthquake we were involved in, in the problem of our uh, engineering faculty uh, building, because this was uh, uh, completely out of order. So, in order, in order to, to design the retrofitting of this building, because we want to, to use some new technology, as was mentioned before, we, we want to know uh, the, the, the structure. We want to have a reliable model of the structure. Uh, because of that, uh, at a certain point after two months, uh, we organized uh, a dynamic testing. Uh, this dynamic testing was done uh, under uh, the, the, the seismic swarm. So we, we still, at that point, after two months, we still we had uh, the, the, the shake going on. Uh, and uh, also the, the, the structure was uh, uh, with a, under, uh, it was not in service, so it was a little bit dangerous to be there. And so we, we ran this dynamic uh, testing in, uh, in less than two, two days uh, with the help of uh, Dora Fodi that is uh, in our group uh, of the national research. Uh, and uh, so uh, after doing the testing, after a while, we, we, we finish the work now, uh, we try to get information from this testing that was done very, very fastly and also in a, in a fast way. So try, the, try to get the best information that we can from this, from this data. And, um, okay, so we use uh, output only uh, identification middle because we were not able to have information on the, on the input, on the excitation. Uh, so the, the test was done, uh, as I, I, I told you, very fastly, putting some accelerometer in the damaged building. And the, our idea was to uh, identify a finite element model of the building, a reliable finite element model of the building using this information. What we do generally is to construct a parametric physical model and so we have this uh, experimental response. In, in our case we just get an ambient response 
from this response we, we do modal identification. Uh, this was done in this particular case by enhanced frequency domain decomposition and stochastic subspace algorithms. And uh, from the identified modal model, so we, we have uh, uh, natural frequency, modal shape, modal uh, damping, sorry for the Italian, uh, participating masses. Uh, from this uh, we identify a physical, a, a physical uh, system, we, we try to compare the identified physical model with the modal model that we have. So doing this comparison, the, the, the identified physical model is a model that we construct by finite element. Through this comparison, through the minimization of the error between the modal model and the modal model that is, uh, is co constructed by the finite element, we try to get the parameters that minimize this, uh, this error. And doing this, we, we, we say that the model that we get is a kind of a re reliable model. The problem in the, in the real field is that uh, uh, generally these are very complex uh, structures. And also the, the structure was also damaged. So in some sense uh, what we generally do for normal building is more complicated here because we have also damages. But the purpose uh, here was not uh, having uh, a damage identification procedure. The purpose was uh, try looking at the damage, the, the damage that we, we can, was visible, looking at that damage, we want to try to have a finite element model the best possible, that taking in consideration also the damage that we, we, we see. Uh, so the building is, uh, is that one, actually at the engineering faculty we have four buildings. Three are the new one that you can see in the, in the bottom of the picture. Uh, on, the, on the top of the picture there is the, the old one. The, 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 the new one were uh, going under retrofitting or under restoration, and so now they will be uh, accessible in the, in the coming week. I, instead, the old one is still under process. Uh, this, uh, the, this building that you see uh, is called Building A, and when I was there doing the lecture, I never noticed that the building is done by seven substructures, because when you go inside the building, you are not going to see joints and so on. The reality after the earthquake was uh, uh, clear that uh, the building was done by seven substructures that you can uh, so uh, in the, under the, the, the picture, and this touch, all, all of these statues were different, completely different in terms of uh, mold shapes and, uh, and, and so on. And the, pro, the main problem was that uh, this substructure uh, that I call A, A1, A2, A3, A3 and so on, they were, they were attached to the facade, and was, the facade was a, a kind of shear walls uh, connected with the steel, steel tubular structure. Uh, so we tested just two of them. One is A3 and the other one is A1. Uh, in order to see what, what we, we were able to, to get. And uh, the, the substructure A sub 3 is this one. The accelerometer layout was, uh, was the one that is, uh, you can find in the paper also. It was quite difficult to, to, to put the accelerometer in the, in the right places because we, we were not able to have access by elevator and so on. So we just went with the stays, normal stays. And the accelerometer, you can see that the accelerometer at the top floor where we had the possibility to have four accelerometers on the facade 
and the oh, three accelerometer on the structure that was behind the, the facade. So these are the kind of uh, data that we got. Uh, we we run uh, some uh, we run the test. We run the acquisition for. Uh, uh, 40 minutes because in this technique uh, is, is necessary to have a long, a long uh, acquisition. Uh, uh, you can see the frequency, the Fourier transform of that acquisition in order to see if uh, the noise level is not so, so high. Uh, you can appreci appreciate that because you can see the peak of the first modes on the frequency, on the fast Fourier transform. And also, maybe if you look, for example, at the last four uh, data, you can see that uh, the behavior uh, is quite different uh, on the, that uh, four, uh, four, four points, uh, looking at the fast uh, Fourier transform. Okay, after that we, we we run this analysis with the enhanced uh, frequency domain comp decomposition. Uh, we were able to identify these, the first uh, six uh, mo mole shapes. And, uh, okay. and uh, we, we, we did the same for the, the other building. And also, we, we used another method, so we, we were able to see with the two methods if the model shape and the frequency, the, the shapes of, of the modes are, are stable in some sense, in the sense that uh, are reliable. And we noticed that uh, in the case of the more regular structure, this was, was, was uh, checked. In the case of the irregular one, this was not so, so good. So in, in this sense, the identification that we use is more reliable in, re, in regular structure than, than in the regular one. Uh, another problem uh, that we, we had is, um, okay, when as I, I mentioned, we try to identify the finite element model uh, looking at the error between the frequency of the modal model and the frequency that we get from finite elements and also the modal shapes. And we have some criteria, criterion to check the, 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 the difference. Uh, looking at this, uh, we, uh, this, we have to decide that uh, the best model that minimized this error was a model that should take into account that the, these two substructures, A sub 3 and A sub 4, are connected together. So we realize this, this model that is, is shown there. And also, to minimize this error, we have to take into account some stiffness of the mensory panels on the facade. And at the end, uh, okay, another, another problem that we went through is uh, the, the dimension of the two uh, modal vectors, in the sense that because we have 18 accelerometer, the dimension of the modal model that was identified is much uh, less, uh, smaller than the one that we have in the finite element. Uh, because of that, we, we have to use a, a reduction on the, on the space of the finite element, uh, element model uh, to compare the right dimension. So, I want to mention that uh, generally when uh, you, you go in this problem, you have this, this, this difference that uh, you generally uh, do some uh, uh, small number of uh, of location measurements, and the finite element model has much more uh, nodes. And so in, in the paper is written how we, we, we solve uh, this problem, uh, taking into account this, this uh, transformation matrix that is based on, on the model. Uh, and the end, at the end, we use these two, two criteria that are quite well known, is the MAC, and maybe is not too much well known the, the COMAC. And this help us to compare the, the, two, the two model solutions. So, 
we got uh, this result that are on the publication uh, in which we have model 1, model 2 and model 3. These are the, the MAC. The, the results, someone can say, are not so good, but the problem is that the model is very, is very complicated. So, uh, in the model 3, in order to get uh, that result, we have to introduce uh, the damage that occurred in one of the, uh, of the tubular structure, because one of the tubular structure was, uh, was completely damaged during uh, the, the test. And so we introduced that uh, in the model, and uh, introducing that we were able to get uh, the, the best uh, results. Um, this, um, this, so this is uh, the picture that after two, two years and three years remember us that uh, when we were doing the test, uh, uh, the tubular was not in the place because it was broken uh, by the, the earthquake. Um, okay. Um, just to, to mention, I mean, to, to go back in what uh, was mentioned before, what, what, this was used uh, to run uh, finite element analysis. Uh, in which uh, um, we have uh, nonlinearities uh, in the concrete, in the material, and also we have uh, nonlinearities in the dampers. And uh, again, uh, in, in terms of the design of the dampers, uh, in, in this case, in the final element, for sure, the, 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 model, uh, the, the modes are real modes. So the, the, the issue that was, uh, was, previously, uh, was previously mentioned is, is true in the real, uh, in the real field. Um, doing this, uh, this, um, this path, we, we, were, uh, we, uh, we were tackled the problem of uh, uh, preliminary design method for viscoelastic connection in adjacent structures. Um, because one of the problem is one of the problem was uh, how we are going to design this uh, dissipative uh, connection. So uh, was mentioned uh, uh, in the previous lecture that uh, in, in certain situation we can have uh, what we call it adjacent structures. And for us, adjacent structure can be either two buildings in which the, the, the model is just one mode of the building, or can be also the interaction between global modes and local modes, as in the case that was mentioned by Bill Spencer before of, of interaction between the cables and, and the deck. Uh, why these are, these are important? Because uh, uh, for sure uh, in this interaction there are uh, large relative displacement and uh, the, in, the dissipative in interconnection is, uh, is working uh, quite well. So we can get uh, advantage of uh, using dissipative devices. Um, okay, uh, one uh, also looking at the bill uh, previous presentation uh, I, I try to, to, actually I want to speak with him later, I try to, 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 to point out this problem. How, are, how we are going to choose the damping coefficient? So the, the idea is uh, should we have uh, a pre preliminary design method to, to fix the damping coefficient, because Bill showed us that changing a little bit the, the matrix, uh, we'll, we will have uh, some, uh, some problems in, in, in some uh, responses. But the problem of the design is, is not so, uh, at least from my point of view, is not so easy. Because is, uh, the design problem is in, in dynamics, and also the design problems cannot avoid to use uh, complex modes if we want to stay with that idea. So uh, we, we, we were uh, uh, looking at this problem of two 
simple oscillator connected by a, a control devices and we use uh, three, three kind of simple linear models that is the poorly viscous model, the Kelvin Voigt model and the Maxwell model. And for sure we use the state space, uh, state space modeling of this, of this problem. In order to, to solve all the family of possible of possible uh, model, we use non-dimensional variables. Doing these non-dimensional variables, uh, so defining the, the, the non-dimensional variables, we know that there are four parameters that are going to affect the eigenvalue problem. So all the problem, the eigenvalue problem is defined by four parameters. Uh, okay, we can uh, derive the equation, I mean, write the equation in the control manner that was mentioned by, by Bill. So the, the dissipative device is, uh, is uh, modeled as a control, a control device. So the constitutive law of the device is in the U variable. So lo looking at the problem in this way, we will have a controlled matrix that I call it A hat, and the controlled ma matrix is the matrix that have inside the control parameter that are the mechanical parameter of the passive devices. Uh, so it ju it's just a way to look at the problem. Uh, in the case of Max Maxwell coupling, uh, the, the dimension of the, of, the, of the problem is increased because of, of the type of, uh, of the logical model. So the dimension is, is instead to be 4 is, is 5. Uh, our goal was look at the sensitivity analysis and, uh, uh, of the eigenvalues in which we have these four parameters that are uh, let's say describing the manifold of the eigenvalues in the in the space of the these parameters. Um, so we we run the, some some numerical analysis during this this period, and one way to look at this problem is to 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 see the rot logus of of the problem. So. For fixing the, the structure, that means uh, I fixed rho and beta, that means I fixed the, the mass ratio of the two oscillators, and I fixed the frequency ratio of the two oscillators. I, I want to, to see how the gain value goes, uh, uh, moving the other two parameters. In the case of Kelvin Voigt and Maxwell, the other two parameters are are the, the stiffness and the damping of the, of the passive devices. Uh, and the, the, the picture under the, the previous one is uh, the same picture for a different uh, oscillator. So in that case we have uh, rho equal 1 and beta equal 1.8. So looking at this, at this uh, root logus, we can, we can see that in, in both cases we have uh, a peculiar point in which the two eigenvalues coincide. And this is, uh, these are two eigenvalues that coincide that have uh, real part and imaginary part different from, from zero. That is different from the case of instability in which the real part is, is, uh, is equal to zero. Another, another observation is uh, that uh, the way in which the parameter affect uh, the, the path going to the, the, this peculiar va value is different from the Kelvin Voigt and the Maxwell, and the Maxwell case. And in the Maxwell case, we have one again value that is uh, on the real axis, moving on the real axis, but the beginning uh, is very far, so doesn't interact too much with this, uh, with this uh, peculiar point. Uh, Looking at, at the problem in, in, the, in the space of the parameters, so we were able to, to write, to, to, to evaluate, to calculate uh, the, 
the manifold on which the, this eigenvalue lie. Uh, so in, in this case you can see that there is the real part, the imaginary part of the eigenvalues and there are logos in which the eigenvalue has the, uh, the, the real part equal, that is the path that goes to the P point and also we can see the P point that is the, this peculiar point in this space and these are the section of, of this manifold. Uh, if we reduce the, 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 the view looking only at the manifold of the P point because we have uh, other parameters, these are for fixed rho and beta value, if we reduce that manifold, uh, we, we look at another space, we, we look just at the, at the manifold of P, we can uh, see how this, uh, this locus of equal eigenvalues uh, is. Uh, so these are the, the section and uh, so these are the three dimensional plot and uh, also the section. Um, if we, we, we do a zoom in the area between 0 and uh, 1.5 of the ratio between the two frequency, uh, we have this, this plot here in which in, in uh, red we have the locus of poorly viscous dampers uh, that has uh, equal eigenvalue. That was one of the results in a previous paper that Angelo Longo showed in, in a, a paper of 1990. So this is a kind of generalization because this is the case of Kelvin Voigt. So is the, we have one parameter more that is the, the stiffness. And also there is a, an area in which the problem is, is cannot find a solution. So there is an area of the parameter rho and beta in which, so there is a, a couple of system in which you cannot have equal eigenvalues. Uh, why these equal eigenvalues are interesting uh, to us? Okay, first of all, uh, also in the Maxwell case, we have similar situation, but in the, in the case of Kelvin Voigt, because the problem is four dimensional, we cannot find an analytical solution of this logos. Instead, in the case of Maxwell, we cannot find that, but we know that there is a similar problem. Because we can find this analytical solution, we can plot this, this diagram that are the logos of equal eigenvalue for all kind of system. So in the Kelvin void case is done by analytical solution, in the case of Maxwell it was done by Maxwell. These, uh, these plots are <laughs> potentially can be a plot to design the, the, the damper because I have the two oscillator which are characterized by mass ratio and uh, and the frequency ratio, I go in the plot and I can find the eta parameter and the gamma parameter that are the stiffness and the damping that make the system having equal eigenvalue. Okay, so this is, uh, the problem is, is this an optimal condition in terms of design for, for example, for earthquake engineering purpose? So we, we have uh, run uh, uh, other analysis in which we, we, uh, at the cross of this section we have this peculiar point uh, and we have uh, de defined some index of performance that for example in this case are the maximum of uh, the frequency response function of the design point against other, other possible system. Uh, so uh, you can see, for example, green is when the design point is going better than the other system, and red is where it's going worst. Uh, if you look, uh, and this is done for Kelvin Voigt and for Maxwell, if you look at the frequency response function uh, on the 
on the base exc excitation. So you have base excitation, and you have these two oscillators, and you look at the frequency response function for different coupling. The green one is the frequency response function in which the two eigenvalues are equal. And the, the red one are the other, other cases. So is um, similar in, in some way to the Denartok problem for, uh, for uh, to the mass damper. But here it is quite different because uh, in, reality, in reality what we think is that we, when we have two eigenvalues equal, we get a kind of balance situation between all the possible responses. For example, we have here displacement, frequency response function displacement on the top, and acceleration. If you look at all these, these, these frequency response, you, you can see that sometimes green is worse, but in the average, green is a balance, a balance point in some, in some dynamical sense. Uh, okay, we in the paper we run also analysis with the real earthquakes, showing that uh, these uh, design points can be a possible design points, especially for preliminary preliminary design. And this can be very useful because we we have an analytical way to look at these preliminary uh, preliminary design parameters. Uh, these parameters were uh, were selected. Uh, in the case of, uh, of the engineering building, uh, uh, on the engineering faculty building, because uh, uh, when we, we tackled this problem, one of the main issues was uh, which is the damping coefficient of the damper that I have to put in, at least to run the, the analysis after the final element analysis. So we used that, that criteria, and around that value, we run several nonlinear analysis that I am not showing here. And at the end, next week we, we will be there, we, we decide to put uh, uh, dampers at uh, uh, A sub 2, A sub 3, A sub 4 uh, blocks, uh, transversal dampers, and also uh, longitudinal dampers. Uh, with this preliminary design. The, the final curves uh, of the dampers, these are nonlinear viscous dampers, the final curves uh, of the design of the damper are this one, and these are based on the uh, damping uh, coefficient that uh, must be selected in some way. Uh, this is uh, the, the test of, the, of one of the damper, uh, actually, this is a test in which we give to the testing machine the relative displacement uh, that we get uh, from the finite element model under some, uh, some earthquake uh, loading, uh, some design earthquake loading. And actually, uh, a, a nice thing or uh, interesting thing is if you go to touch the damper, it's very hot after this test that at least for me was, uh, was incredible. But you cannot touch the, the damper. So is the energy is dissipating in, in uh, thermal loading. Okay, these are the, some pictures that actually I got uh, almost, uh, because the, the retrofitting was done, uh, this is two, two, two years ago, more or less. Eh? <laughs> And uh, we take some time. These, these are the pictures of the building, uh, more or less now. Okay, uh, the second uh, uh, part of my talk is uh, uh, related to structural monitoring. So, in, the, in this case, I am speaking about this before Bill. Uh, tomorrow, Bill is going to, to give to us more insight to this problem. Uh, the, the, uh, structural modeling was very, very popular uh, in the, after the earthquake in, uh, in L'Aquila uh, because the, there, there were several uh, situations by several universities uh, immediately after the earthquake in which a lot of uh, group, research group went to L'Aquila uh, doing some monitoring of the, of the main 
uh, monuments. So these are some church and, and, and the castle. Uh, I recent I, I have uh, tried to organize this this data, uh, looking uh, on the website and in a recent paper uh, I, I I make this table in order to to see how many how many uh, structure was monitored and also. Uh, which kind of monitoring they have, and how long the monitoring uh, went through. For example, you can see most of the monitoring went through for two months, other for 24 months, and there are some, some currently working that uh, are mainly done by University of L'Aquila because we are still there. And uh, uh, so you can see also the number of uh, measurement devices also, you can see if they are wireless or, or, or not, or how many of them are wireless. Uh, we were involved in the monitoring uh, of uh, Colemaggio, that is uh, one church, one, one of the main church of, uh, of the city of L'Aquila. The location is uh, uh, outside the, the, just outside the, the center, the historical center. Uh, the church is. Uh, is uh, has a, a peculiar shape in some sense because it is not uh, a, a classical Latin cross shape. So there are not the two wings. Uh, this is a, in reality is a problem in, in terms of uh, of the structures because it's very slender, and uh, and he uh, has a. a, a, a a stiff part in the in the upper part in the upset, so is the is composed by two two subsystems in some, in some way. One is uh, is uh, uh, less stiff, uh, uh, it has less strength. And another one is more stiff with more more strength. And instead, looking after studying the problem, the collapse arrives exactly between these two. Two, two structures. Uh, so the the, the church is uh, in reality is uh, is also is very is deeply studied. And also also because uh, uh, the, there were some retrofitting before the earthquake. And so because of this retrofitting, there are a, a scientific debate. Uh, if the if the about if the retrofitting was done well or or bad or or why we have not understand that uh, the the collapse uh, uh, was going in the in this part, and there are papers that are debating about about this. Uh, the collapse appear on the transept area, in which there was there were uh, a dome in concrete done in the in the 50s. And also, you can see the, the, the material of the mansory uh, where the collapse appeared that is, is, is not so, so good. Uh, these are pictures immediately after the, the earthquake, so we have this partial collapse on the transept area. And uh, for example, this concrete beams uh, that when uh, at the beginning uh, I was looking at, uh, I cannot understand w what are for. In reality, doing some historical, uh, historical uh, reconstruction, these were uh, two concrete beam beams that was done because one of the pillars, one of the columns, was rebuilt. So in, o in order to have a beam uh, to rebuild the columns, they, they Create this uh, uh, this structure inside. I, I have some picture that probably can be more. So the, these beams are not going uh, to all the wall; are just in one part because we're used to reconstruct one of, of the of the columns. Uh, this uh, was the dome, and uh, this dome was reconstructed in the 50s in concrete. But in reality, before the earthquake, almost no one known uh, this was was uh, was uh, also was recognized after the collapse. So the, the dome, 
the, the dome has a roof, was an internal dome, because the roof is, an, is not, the dome is not going up over the roof. So it was an internal dome, but very heavy. The, 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 no, no, we don't know. No, for sure we don't know. So it is a because, strong architect, I'm sure. Yeah, on the 50s. Because at that time, the superintendents. No, <laughs> are two different persons. No, but in the 50, this is also, you know, through, through this problem you try to be better, but we don't know. Now, in the 50s, generally the superintendents that is the government that uh, they, they just give uh, some work to some, some person. Uh, there was no too much study, there was no uh, design. So there are, no, there are not uh, uh, drawings of this, of this uh, reconstruction of the dome in the 50s. There are drawings of what was done in the 70s by a famous superintendent, Moretti, that changed the old the church. Because the church was. Uh, so if I want to change a window in my house. No, no, but he, he was the superintendent. But the superintendent. The, the church was baro baroque, uh, in baroque. Uh, he changed everything. Uh, this was a big, a big issue in L'Aquila. But I can, I can show you the, maybe the picture. I, I don't know if I have here. In the, in the 70. Okay, but in the. Okay, we, we, there are, this is written in, in some paper. Who is interested, I can give to, to them the paper. Um, just to, to look at, the, at this, uh, this, this problem. Uh, so, why discussing? Do it in concrete and post concrete? No, I tell you. No, I and it was not, not good because in the first concrete it was heavy and it, 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 it collapsed. We don't know. We will see. Because this is an open, an open problem. I am not involved in the new design, but it is an open, an open problem. In the, in the year 2000, uh, Angelo Longo probably remember quite well this period, in the year 2000, because of, uh, of the, uh, the ceremony of um, the jubileum, because of the jubileum, there were, there were some, some, uh, some money to, to retrofit the church in that period. And, uh, uh, our department was not involved in the retrofitting design, but it was involved in dynamic testing. And actually, our uh, colleague uh, Giovanni Bolchini, that uh, passed away in the year 2009, was one of the persons that was taking care of this dynamic testing. And, uh, so at that point we, we ran this testing. Uh, uh, this is also interesting in some way because uh, uh, we had uh, better accelerometer in terms of sensitivity because these are force balance, all type of force balance accelerometer. But at the same time, uh, Giovanni say, okay, we don't get any, any signal. So we have to run some test with uh, a vibrodyne. So we had this vibrodyne where is V, and we ran some testing with, with this setup. And we were able, with the uh, with, uh, old technique, Goider technique, we were able to, to get the, a modal model of this, uh, of this uh, part, of the, of the slender part. So we, have, we had a modal model of, uh, uh, let's say, local modes of, of the church. Uh, these are the... The frequency that we got, uh, these are the, actually these are done by Giovanni, these are the model shape that uh, we got. At that time I was running the final element uh, model. Uh, this, is, this is my, my work in uh, Easter of that time. Uh, so, spoken with Giovanni, he said, okay, we don't need to do a big finite element because he was against uh, having too much trouble. So we just... Uh, 
can be can have a, a small model taking into account the transversal uh, the transversal deflection of this part and so we run this analysis also because we want to see the effect of uh, the design that was to put these uh, steel braces on the top okay and uh, after there was some other dynamic tests done by Giovanni on the on the facade and uh, also the so they run a final element also on, on that and the mode shape are this one and the frequency you can read are, are around 4 Hz so the frequency of the transversal mode shape are around 1 Hz and the frequency of the facade is around 4 Hz so there are two, two modes that are completely decoupled in the, in the, in the church after the earthquake we have uh, uh, constructed a complete final element to see if that hypothesis was good or not. Uh, uh, it was good, we, we should say, because they, uh, in, at least in terms of model shapes, because the, the model shapes that we got are very similar to the one that we got with a reduced model. These are uh, all the f uh, frequencies of the final element model and also you have the error with the identification that was done at that period. So this was a, a way to construct a, a model that was used to design the structural health monitoring that we realized after. Doing the model before the damages, before the earthquake, we were able also to do the model in the actual state. So getting that model, we, we move the, the part that was broken, also we put some, some of, the, of the structure that was inserted in the church uh, after, uh, for safety reason, and we construct a, a finite element model that uh, is the actual, the actual model. And you can see, for example, the fifth mode, that uh, we, we we went from 1.45 hertz in the, in the previous case to, to a flexible mode around 1 hertz. But the model shape is completely different because the, the two naves are like behaving as a cantilever that is attached to the facade. And this two cantilever doesn't have any fixing structure. So they are very flexible and in some sense also very unsafe. We run uh, also nonlinear static analysis in order uh, to understand uh, uh, the, the way uh, in which uh, the, the, the church failed. So uh, we, we look at this problem that I mentioned before, that there is a, a, a portion of the church that is going to have a, a very high stress and uh, is the portion in which there is this big change in terms of stiffness, also in terms uh, of uh, strength. These are some results of the nonlinear static analysis. Uh, this is a, a video. Uh, these are other models that uh, we, we run after. Uh, this is a video of a, a full three-dimensional final element model that shows the concentration of stresses in the, in the portion of the building that uh, failed the, on, in the arch of the transept. Uh, okay. mm, this is the mo model shape of, uh, of this, this new model, let's see. It's not so important. Okay, just two slides to show that we are also working on uh, some new modeling uh, to, to describe time evolving cracking in, in Mansory structures uh, with a, a new research associate of uh, our department. And in, the, in this, in this uh, work we, we are trying to see how how it evolves the, the damage in, uh, during the, the, the first cycle of the, of the earthquake. 
So these are some preliminary results that were presented to the IMEA, IMEA Congress. Uh, this is the situation uh, to show to the person that uh, doesn't know the church. So this is the church in, in, uh, in this uh, situation right now. And uh, on this situation we have uh, designed this uh, uh, structure and monitoring system with the help of Bill. Uh, so we, we got some uh, devices uh, from, from Illinois. Uh, these devices were uh, assembled in, uh, in our lab with the help of uh, electronic uh, uh, group and uh, we tested the, the devices uh, in, in this uh, lab prototype, uh, still, st uh, still structure, uh, and we tested the performance of the wireless accelerometers against a wired one that we were using before. So we, we got this, this performance, uh, and also these are the, the device parameters. And uh, based on the model that we, have, we, we previously have, uh, have done, have mentioned, we decided the location of the 18 devices. And so we deployed these, these uh, 18 devices uh, accelerometer. And uh, after one year, more than one year probably, we also deployed uh, some crack meters that are done with the new uh, new sensors uh, uh, fully developed by University of L'Aquila. Uh, these are the, the places in which the crack meter are uh, installed. The, right now the, the, the monitoring system is completely working, is completely installed. These are some, some uh, time history that we have, uh, uh, have simulated. Uh, on some peculiar point of the church based on the modeling uh, that I showed before. These are the installations, uh, the, the, some pictures that we have, uh, we have uh, taken uh, during the installation that was quite complicated as you can see. Uh, also we ran uh, some, some tests with the hammer, also a test uh, hanging a cable that is inside the church. Uh, we got some, some uh, measurements uh, along the church. Some of the measurements are here, we have a report, we are still working on uh, most of this data. And we were able to get six uh, uh, aftershock and also some uh, main shock of the Emilia earthquake that uh, uh, appears in Italy later. Uh, so we have um, both near near fault uh, uh, far far field for, uh, far field acceleration and uh, the the kind of data you, you can see from the frequency uh, from the fast Fourier transform that we, we still have a lot of noise because the excite, to excite large amplitude in, in the church due to the mass is, is quite complicated that is uh, was already known by, by Giovanni Belchini, but uh, we were able to identify uh, the probably is the maximum recorded is uh, five, uh, you can see eight milliG. So is the last column. Uh, is between 5 and 8 milliG, uh, we record also 1 milliG, but this is the range of these 6, uh, six uh, earthquakes. Uh, so we, we were able uh, to identify the fist mode, that at least the fist mode, we are working on, on this data, and you can see that in the different situation is quite the, the identification of the first frequency is quite robust, it's around one that is similar to the one that we got doing the finite element model through the one that we have identified before the, with the data before the earthquake. Okay, so thanks for your attention. <laughs> Questions? Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. yeah. And I, I wondered if that would get different uh, results. Uh, whether that might not be a better. Mm -hmm. Because I know uh, now I remember when I I read your paper about uh, also H infinity. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, because we, for, uh, I show you this graph, green and red. Yes. These were done on the peak, mm. so were not done on the on the integral. So these were done on the peak of the of the frequency transfer function. So looking at that, you you have seen that the, there are some area, but for some peculiar uh, uh, index. So for example, in this case. Uh, we have, uh, for example, the, the J index of the first uh, oscillator. So it's the, 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 mark, the peak of the frequency transfer function against the peak of the design, the transfer function of the design point. Uh, so you have uh, a range in which your design point is going better and a, a range of parameters where it's going worse. But for example, looking at this graph, you can see that uh, from the design parameter that is in, in, the, in the center, to have a better result, you have to move decreasing the, the two design parameters that are stiffness and damping of the Kelvin void. So in my point of view, um, this could be a, a preliminary, a, a good balance. So I, I don't know, I don't have a, the right answer about if my design point is uh, is similar to the one that you get with the H2 norm, if this was the, the question. So if you look at the next, uh, the next slide, the, the one that shows the frequency response, yeah. so it looks like P3 and P4, I mean these are linear scales, so it looks like P3 and P4, at least in terms of, of um, C, and probably in terms of, of uh, B, uh, C and B, and A and B, it looks like would have a better RMS design uh, response. Yeah, uh, yeah, but in the in the previous uh, in the previous one, you have P4 is is worse than uh, PD. If I look at B, yeah, but this, this is the second oscillator. So these are the two oscillators. If we want to have something that is going to prevent from both the oscillator. The idea is go in a point in which you have a kind of balance. Because probably I, I didn't go too much in detail about the, this. I mean, for sure, from this you have uh, P is uh, an optimal value in the sense that maximize one of the, damp the damping one of the modal damping in one of the two oscillators. Also, you can see this, this uh, here. So the two real parts, one is maximized, the other one is, in some sense, minimized, but it's not true because there are other, other, other parts. But one of the damp, damping is maximized in that point. Because after that, if you increase, the, the eigenvalue is going back. I, I guess in this A and B, you had a lot of room. So maybe it doesn't give as good results here. You can give up a little bit here to get A and B to give you better performance. Um, and anyway, that might be, you can still calculate the... Result. Yeah, but my, my from, from, from one point of view, is that I have a formula in which you give me the ratio between the two oscillators and the ratio between the mass, and I give to you the, the two parameters in a straight way for Kelvin void cases. In, in the other case, in, for example, if you use H2 norms, you have to evaluate in some, in some way. But you can solve the Lyapunov equation. But it's a nonlinear problem. But, but it, there's, there's straightforward Numerical. I, this is, in my case, is analytical. I think you can do it for, for the uh, two grid freedom system. I think there's a you could get an analytical uh, the, the Lyapunov has a Riccati problem. The Riccati problem is, an, is no linear one. I, I don't know. I don't think so. 
This, you get, I, I, don't, I have not the formal, you, you have an analytical solution in which we, I, I have done the, the graph. I put the graph in the graph manner, the analytical solution that I get. But for sure, we, we, we know, the, the, the paper is published on journals and vibrations, so it's open for <laughs> debating and discussion. But I, I think uh, it's a good design solution. Very nice. Okay.